In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust the preload on the rear shock of a 2009 Kawasaki KLR650. Um, preload is basically, uh, it's, it's the ride height of the motorcycle. It's how much the bike settles when you get on it or you and your passenger or you and your luggage, whatever you know, weight you're adding to the bike. It's how much the bike settles. Um, it's, it's the ride height of the motorcycle while you're riding the bike. Um, the ride height's important because it changes the geometry of the motorcycle, which can affect uh, you know, affect ground clearance. It can affect the uh, steering geometry of the bike. Um, it affects you know where the where the headlight beam is pointing um, when you got your lights turned on. This is the left side of the motorcycle, and this is the uh, rear shock. Um, it's right behind the engine. As you can see, there's the engine. Uh, on California model bikes, there may be a canister here, uh, the, the vapor canister that's used. It's part of the emission system. You might have to remove that to get to the shock. Uh, the manual said I needed to remove the side panel to get to, to get to this location, but I don't. It's, you can see it's right there. There's five different settings on this shock, uh, and each setting is numbered one through five. Uh, this bolt right here is used to change each, each setting. You turn the bolt uh, clockwise, to uh, change uh, the preload setting. Uh, right now it's at the number five, so I can't go backwards. I can only I have to cycle through again. So if I if I want to say I want to change it from five to four, I have to go from five, then one, two, three, four to get to the fourth position. Uh, you turn the bolt to the right, and you'll see you'll see when you turn it this this uh, this piece right here is going to change and, and indicate a different a new number. Uh, so. I'll Turn it to the number one position. You can see it popped up. It's at number one. And I turn it again to the next notch. It's going to go to number two. There's number two, three, four, and five. And that's how you change the preload setting. Now I'll show you a more exact, uh, which isn't a. It's it's not going according to the manual. The Kawasaki manual really doesn't tell you um, how to adjust preload, um, but uh, there's a general rule of thumb which I'll, I'll go through next. All right, the first thing you want to do is uh, find out what your bike's rear suspension travel is. On this particular bike, it's 7.3 inches, um, and what you what you're shooting for is you want your uh, when you sit on your bike. Uh, with yourself or you and your you and your passenger or you and your uh, your luggage or whatever you want your suspension uh, to compress approximately 25 to 33 percent of that uh, rear rear suspension travel so uh, I would want my uh, you know once I when, I when I put my weight on the bike I, I, I would want the, uh, the the suspension to compress about um, one eighth of an inch to uh, 2.4 inches and that's uh, 25 to 33 percent of 7.3 inches, which is my uh, my rear suspension travel. Then uh, get your bike off the ground so your rear wheel is is off the ground. Then pick a point on your swing arm, um, a measuring point. I'm gonna you know pick the end of my swing arm and I'm gonna take a tape measure and measure from this point up to um, I've got a helmet lock here. This I'll say this corner right here. Uh, it's a lot easier too if you have two people to do this. Uh, take your tape measure, measure that distance. Let's see, which is about uh, like 29 inches. So record that measurement. Okay, now get on your bike. Um, get in your normal riding position. You know, bounce up and down so it, until it settles in your normal position. Then that's why I said you need two really need two people for this. Then take your tape measure and re-measure between those two points that you did previously. So I'm trying to get this measure on my uh, end of my swing arm and measure to that point on my uh, my helmet lock, and it's about um, 18. Point 18 and three quarters inches. So my my first measurement with the with the suspension fully suspended uh, was uh, uh, 21 inches, and then when I, I put my weight on the bike and got in my normal riding position, uh, I got a measurement of um, 
18 and 3 quarter inches and then it, you record those two measurements and then you take the difference and that difference should be uh, 25 to 33 percent of your um, uh, rear, rear suspension travel which which mine would be um, it's 2.25 inches which is in between 1.8 and 2.4 so I'm right in there and that's that's at the number five setting on my rear shock which is as high as I can go for preload uh, if you're a big person and 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 you're way out of range uh, you might want to consider an aftermarket shock that can handle the extra weight um, you know and get your get your riding position right in that right area remember your your objective here with setting your bike's preload is to uh, set the proper ride height with which which affects the safety of the bike as, as well as the performance um, and it's not only rear shock but so, some some front uh, front forks you can you can set the preload and, and there's an adjustment for that on this particular bike there isn't there's no adjustment um, there's tricks you can do to to change the setting but um, and that's that's a whole nother video um, oftentimes in these videos I, uh, I, I you know I'm trying to trying to keep the keep the video within a certain time frame so um, oftentimes I forget I forget to, to to mention certain things. So if you know if something comes up and uh, you got a question, just go ahead and leave a comment and and I'll try and answer it. Um, anyway, uh, I hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.